Hello, this is Randy. Randy, Eric Coffey. What's going on today? How can I help you? Um, my husband's on the line because we're actually remote. He's in Dallas. I'm in Houston, so I have oh. him merged on the call. Okay. You don't mind? No, no worries. Go ahead and merge him. All right, so I had sent you an email just because... So last time we met, we were still wrestling with the next codes and how to how to narrow it down, right? And so we, after our conversation, we were able to do some more brainstorming. And Leland was able to look at everything. It's like, okay, maybe it's maybe it will be the infrastructure. So we have we have these two nice codes that I have sent you that's under IT. So five four one two and five four one five one nine. Uh-huh. Five four one five one two. Okay. Okay. But the other side of things is like I was telling you, because we have like the it's five of us as siblings and family, we still have a couple other management strengths that we have, which are event related training, putting on events and so on. So we okay. would like to still do doing some of that. Now, can we put all of those together in Sam? Yes. Like, you know, like set up the company yes. as a re- more like a management company. Okay. Yes. You go, listen, you can put as many next codes as you like. You can put whatever next code you like. In fact, I've had contracting officials reach out to me to take on jobs because they needed to get them out and, and, and done. And they told me what NACS goes to add to my profile in order to do the jobs. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's when you get, that's All when right. you, that's when you start having relationships with mm-hmm. the people. So as you go along the process, right? So it's not like it, a nice, it's not a one, one and done. You can nah. uh, go through and you can add, add on, codes. take them off, you know, change them. It doesn't matter. The only time that it really starts to matter is if when you apply for one of your small business certifications. That's when they look at your primary next code. But up until then, it doesn't really matter. Okay. Well, I am starting to work on the woman-owned certification. So So then you need to make a decision which one is going to be your primary code for that. Okay. Because I remember you saying that – it, you can limit yourself based on the, um, I guess, the averaging, right? Right, yeah. The so, it, right, right, right. Yeah, I, mean, I listen to you. I listen. <laughs> no, no, so. Yeah, that's right. So, which, so I'm looking at your event management codes. So out of the 5, 6, 1, 19, 20, and then the 7, 2, 1, 1, 10, which yeah, one of those Yeah, that two? one's not going to work. That 7, 2, 1, 1, 1, 10, I, I had emailed back and said, okay, I realize it's not going to probably work for us because when I went and dug a little bit deeper, um, like who were the actual vendors, Right. it seems like that is actually hotels ah, you see. providing that service right. directly. So I'm like, okay, that's not us. So I, I know I need to stick with the five six one nine two zero. And and you see that's how you come, how that's how you make a decision based on process elimination. You start looking at who are the clients, who are the veterans, who who are your competitors, and then you'll get an idea of whether or not the code makes sense. But for your women owned certification, you definitely have to choose a code. You're gonna have to choose okay. one well, primary it- code. Now on your SAM profile, it doesn't matter. But uh-huh. when it when you choose okay. when you make a decision for your cert- women owned business certification, they're gonna ask you which is your primary next code. Hmm. Okay, so we need to decide between the five four one five one nine or the five one two one. I think. Okay. So, so that in helps. that case, where you got two different businesses that are focusing on different areas, can you go back in and create another business to do that, or do you do? Because you'll have to get both of those businesses certified independently, correct? It would be mm-hmm. difficult for her to, to have two businesses under her name certified as women-owned small businesses. So she would have to, I mean, it just wouldn't be realistic. But yeah, you. I mean, effectively, yes, Leon, yes, you could go back and get two businesses qualified to do this. But then if she wanted to have one be her woman-owned small business, um, she then have to still pick a business, right? So even if... They one did IT and one did event to to have her one of them become a woman owned small business. She still have to pick which one of the two. So in that case, it to me it doesn't make a difference. Like it, it, there's no additional benefit for creating a second company. I, I probably need to do a little bit more research into the events one, but I think it probably would benefit more on the IT side. I, you know what I think? I'm telling you guys, I really think that you probably should look at some actual contracts 
that you're interested in and see which one that you can actually meet the requirements for. Which one, given right now where you're at, um, which one do you have the high, you know, higher probability of meeting all of the requirements? Or, you know, not all of them, but, you know, let's say 90% of them, or the majority. And that's the one I would probably go after. Whichever one I'm, I'm most prepared to actually realize today and do with given my capabilities, my skill sets, my past performance, my, you know, my network, all that kind of stuff. That's probably what I would lead to. Okay. Well, we can, we started looking at some, but then we get lost in some of all that translation that right. we can go back. <laughs> you subscribe to my email list. I, you know, I send out some vocabulary words and, and we help talk, deal with some of that translation stuff on my website. I, you know, we, I have, where we go through some of that. And I, and I would encourage you just to watch more videos because you'll become more familiar with the lingo. It's not as bad as people think it is. It really is a lot of the same stuff over and over and mm -hmm, over again. Over. Yeah. Once think about, again, think about yeah. this way. You guys, the, the, you know, are probably like twice as smart as these government people. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just being honest with you. They're trained in one specific function and that's it. So, yeah, that person who's writing the contracts may seem like they are more knowledgeable than you, but all they know is about contracts. And then the guy who's handling the IT stuff, I mean, that's all he knows about is the IT. He knows nothing about the contracts. And so the, the reason why this government contract whole thing seems confusing is because as a small business, you have to learn all aspects. You've got to learn the technical side. You've got to learn the contract side. You have to learn the management side, you know, you know the compliance. So that's why it seems overwhelming for us as small business owners. But, you know, we have to learn every aspect of this. Mm -hmm. And then on the government side, we're, you know, they, they only learn their one job function. But I may, like on, a, on, a given, on any given contract, I probably deal with eight different government people. Okay. On the contract stuff, it's it's the same thing. It's repetitive over and over and over again. If you start pulling down and looking at and reading um, those bid packages, you'll see similarities. They're all using the same FAR languages. They're all referencing the same FAR mm -hmm. codes. Um, but if you don't look at them, then it seems like a mystery. But you've got to pull them down and read them. And then, you know, I would rather you re pull them down, read them, and ask questions about that. Okay. The, you know, this next thing well, then, is not anything to get hung up on. The, okay. the other question I have is, um, so we've done a lot of preliminary legwork, nice codes, all those different things, setting up everything, getting all the preliminary stuff done. But we need to get, you know, how, how do we start getting the, I guess the next step is just start just over and over applying for different contracts that we believe that we would be good fit that? No. I, no, I disagree. No. Okay. Bill we have to build relationships, right? So yes. we have to start. I'm sorry. I missed that, Randy. I missed what you said. No, I was saying I know we need to start with the marketing by t the target area, target market. Yes, and, uh, correct. Working. Yeah, I just got to looking at the os os Ostabu. Yes. Yeah. Right. I that right. But, yeah, working on that to get the, some of the inroads. Yeah, you need to, what you need to do, Leon, first, one of the first things you probably, you got to do is, um, like I said, I would pull down a contract that I was interested in, find out what the requirements were, and then find out how to, why I become, make sure that I am pre-qualified to fulfill, you know, in all those areas, whatever they're asking for. You know, if they're asking for specific type of equipment, I would make sure I have that equipment. If they're asking for um, specific type of personnel, I make sure I have access to you know that personnel or that you could hire them if needed, you know all that kind of stuff. So I would make sure I'm pre-qualified um, for all of the things that they're asking for and any particular solicitation that you're going after or that you're interested in pursuing, I would say. And then you know that would help guide you because let's say I want to, to actually give you a contract. You're not even ready to take it. Because you didn't even you didn't even get yourself pre qualified for all the things that you needed, like credit mm -hmm. with suppliers, or if I told you, hey, you're doing this IT project, but I need five of these, you know, these people that have these specific IT certification. Do you have five of those people ready to go? I'm gonna pay you thirty percent mar margin over and above what they cost you. But but do you have them? Right. So that's the kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. That's what you. That's what people what I would encourage them to start looking at. Okay. Then I'll, I'll you know, that's the biggest thing because 
the next step, I mean, there's a lot of business items that we're doing right now, but they're not moving towards actually no. completing, you know, getting, getting actual contracts or getting business in the door. So my, not, my goal is how do we start getting business in the door? So, Right. And that's how you do it is you identify the requirements, start getting uh, qualified or pre-qualified, find out how do you meet all those requirements, and then at the same time, someone's building relationships with the people in the government in. Because whatever contract they have out today, they'll have it out next month. They'll have it out next year. They'll have it out next quarter. They're mm-hmm. coming back around. They, I mean, these, they're, they're doing these things. They're, they're, they never stop. So you don't have to worry about like missing this one job or missing this one contract opportunity. Mm-hmm. It's going to roll back around a month from now, you know, the next quarter, the next, you know, whatever the next cycle, the next period. So just get prepared for, be prepared for the next time it comes back around. Gotcha. Okay. So should we not be looking more though at this point in time as sub? So maybe targeting the primes instead of targeting the um, actual agencies? Or it's okay. Should we do? We should I think, do both I think, I think it depends time. on on you and what you decide, right? If you pull down a contract and IT mm-hmm. ma- and IT that you believe you can't do the entire contract because of its scope, then yeah, I maybe you want to look at being a sub of uh, subbing out a portion of that work. If you pull down an event management contract that you f- believe that you can fulfill and put all the pieces together, then you may want to be a prime on that. Mm, okay. Just depends on the scope of work that you're looking at. I, I mean, I think that, yeah, on the IT field, um, because IT is such a broad area, and it's hard to say. You know, I've seen IT contracts that involve setting up, like, networking equipment on, on boats, on uh, those, uh, not boats, like those Navy ships, um, where mm-hmm. they, you know, people were building, like, a wireless network, like a, like a land system on a, on a Navy ship. I don't know if Leon can do that. Maybe he can. Maybe he has the capability of doing that. I don't know. Yeah, so like one of the, the, the contracts we looked at a while back, they were uh, they were um, outfitting and trying to uh, build up uh, several places in San Antonio. Um, they were wanting network cable ran. They were wanting the um, Wi-Fi connectivity established and all those other pieces. So that's something that we we could we don't have the the skills as far as to complete all of it right away, but that's something where we can we can bring on people to get that done. Right. A lot of that is is manual labor, and then some of it is technical, um, establishing and configuring the, the routers and, and those different things to, to, to read back to the, the servers and switches. So from that standpoint, I think that, you know, we could go in as a, as a prime. Right, but it may, right. Our, right. Okay. But it may and, be something that, that it, it takes, like, almost 200 people to do. Yeah, um, something and, like that, I think that may be more, that may be out of our ability that right. just takes something where you know, it's going to take 200, 200 or so people that may be out of our ability. But if it was something that maybe only takes about 15 or 20 people to do, that's something that's well within our ability. To, and that's, to and that's the way you make a decision based on that. Okay. Yeah. I think, and that's yeah. pretty, I think, you know. mm-hmm. and Randy, so for me, Randy, that's what I'm saying. It's very difficult to say. It just depends yeah. on the opportunity and the, and the particular mm-hmm. project. Okay. That, I mean, that makes sense. You know, it's just, you know, from for me, as you're managing the business of okay, trying to build it, trying to make sure you, you know, because the other thing is like a business plan. They, they are like, okay, I need to have a business plan. Like there's all this stuff that has to get done. So I'm feeling like I need to have all these things, you know, T's crossed and I's dotted before I should start making these steps. And I, and I to, think you will. I think, relationship. Yeah, I, I think you will because... Before you build a relationship, you're going to grab the forecast list, right? If you grab mm-hmm. the forecast yeah. list, before you, you know, before you grab the forecast list, you're going to do your target market list. Target market mm-hmm. list is going to tell you who the people to call. Um, the forecast list is going to tell you what to talk about. The project. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, I mean, you're going to have, you're going to be prepared. And then before you decide to take on a project, you will have already pulled down a job that was similar in scope, similar size in nature, and you will have already found out what the prerequisites were to to fulfill that job, and you will have already found a way to either meet them and or you know have the ability to meet them if you know push comes to shove. So at that point, I feel like you'd be ready, and I think you would feel okay. that way as well because now you you have all the you have all the pieces. 
Mm-hmm. There's really nothing that you're, you would be missing at that point. Yeah, I think we have the other part we've had to wrap our mind around because I think one of the issues we have as engineers, we tend to analyze to yes. death instead of just like, instead of stop crunching numbers, stop <laughs> whatever. Uh, paralysis but, analysis. <laughs> yes, uh-huh. that, yes. And I was like, okay, we have to kick ourselves out of it. Yeah. But one of the things that we have circled around a hundred times that we're trying to get out of is, well, it's only five of us. Well, how do you take a job that, and we're in Texas, so do we limit ourselves just to Texas that we can drive to? Or are we going to be able to, we, we, not, we need to open our minds to think, okay, well, what are those consulting, not consulting companies per se, but re- recruiting companies or whoever that we need to probably build relationship with so we right. can then right. on track. Right. Workers in Washington, D.C. Right. or Right. And that's to, now that is a very important step. Yeah. You, you need to do that. I, I think that that's an uh, that's a must because you cannot mm-hmm. if you limit yourself to geography, you, it's going to be you're going to yeah. you're going to self um, an uphill battle working with the government because they that's not how they they're structured. They're 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 international. Um so you you, pro, you you need to. That's why I said pull down some contract opportunities so you can review them and see what the scope mm-hmm. services are and see, you know, how you become compliant. That's that's to me. You should absolutely do that in the beginning. Okay. Well, I think that would be our next step over the next few weeks. Pull okay. several and kind of just start going through them with a fine tooth comb. Okay. Sounds like oh, no. Sounds work. like fun. I think you guys got your uh, work cut out for you. You got some homework to do. <laughs> Absolutely, have a lot of homework to do. So, <laughs> okay. keep, yep. yeah, I keep plugging away. So, keep plugging away. Okay. Let's, circ- well, let's circle back around in, in a, maybe a month or two. All right, sounds good. Well, okay. I appreciate it. Thanks. Hey, not a thanks, problem. Eric. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Leon. Thanks, Randy. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Take care. Good luck. <laughs>